It's also a time that we can really just connect with the grassroots family. I think it's really powerful when we can get as many people from the network to meet at one time. People from our coaches circle, um, pro bono uh, volunteers, alumni, athletes, our staff. Um, it's just a good reminder that we're not alone in this work. Um, there are others who are out there who love grassroots health and who want young people to have more opportunities to learn about their health and do it in fun and engaging ways. So with that, um, I do wanna give a few housekeeping reminders. Um, just first off, we are recording that way that people who couldn't be here with us today can, can view. Um, and then also we know that some people are just calling in, they might be at work or unable to take themselves um, off mute or you know might not be able to come on camera. And that is totally okay. Um, we are gonna be going into some breakout sessions where we'll be asking questions. So if you can answer those in the chat, but if not, that's also okay. Um, and with that, I will just take us through our agenda. And Mac, if you could, yep, awesome. So again, um, we're just gonna go into breakout rooms here in a minute. I'll explain more in a second. Um, Jane Wallace, our wonderful program director is gonna give us an update on our DC programs, Philly expansion. Um, we're gonna hear from Triga Trey, Trinaya Anderson, who's been an incredible asset to our team. And she's gonna be help, uh, helping us lead the way in Philadelphia this spring. Um, we'll also talk a lot about Giving Tuesday, which is coming up on November 29th. Um, and then at the very end, we'll also have an opportunity for you to ask any questions you might have. So if you do have them throughout, uh, you can either put them in the chat or you can wait until that last Q&A session. Okay. So if we go to the next slide, Mac is running our slides. She's doing awesome. Um, just wanted to throw out some questions there that you can ask. We're gonna put you into rooms and in those rooms, you have an opportunity to actually take yourself off of mute and talk to some people, whether they're athletes, whether they're alumni. Um, again, this is just a chance for us to get together and hear from each other and connect. Um, so two questions, how are you connected to grassroots? And what is your hope for grassroots health? Again, we're in a really exciting time of growth, but what would that dream grassroots health look like to you? Um, and of course, you can also come up with your own questions. So with that, um, you'll be getting a notification really soon. Max is gonna put you in a breakout room and feel free to join that whenever. We'll come back in about five minutes. All right. Oh, okay, oh. welcome back everyone. Um, if you'd like to, you could just take a moment and either chat it. Um, yeah, if you just wanna put it in the chat, um, one hope that you have for, for grassroots health. And it could be something that you heard in your chat. It could be something that you've been thinking about, but let's just take a minute to do that. I would love to see what you guys talked about. I mean, I'll just say, I hope for some great pilot programs come spring. Um, and I look forward to being a part of those. Yeah. Absolutely. Pilot programs are really part of them. Trinaya, you'll be leading them. Yeah. <laughs> Humbly repeat it that way. <laughs> <laughs> we might come up with some new shout outs as well. Um, so I'm going to put that out there too. Ooh. I love the shout outs. Yeah, I think we got to have like a DC shout out and Philly shout outs and see the difference. Oh, yeah. That's such a good idea, Trigo. I hope we keep Strong Girl, though, everywhere. That's my fave. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep, I'll think I, I'll keep the Strong Girl. You can't yeah. go. <laughs> Bigger impact. Yeah and feeling. Jessica's still passing out goldfish in her house. <laughs> All right, Katie, am I in charge of jumping in here? Well, uh, so uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, I think I think we could go ahead and break into that. Um, yes. Yep. 
Um, and again, let me just say, you know, thanks for participating in that breakout room. Um, we think it's really important that we stay close to each other and just like keep the conversations going. And I hope that the conversations, you know, if you if you met with somebody today in your breakout room, um, don't feel like that has to be the end. You know, feel free to swap numbers, swap emails. Um, we hope that you can do that. And yes, Jane, now, so with that, um, Jane's got some really exciting program updates, very organized this semester. Um, so I'm gonna let her take it away and share those with you. Awesome, thank you, Katie. Hello, everybody. Um, it's awesome to have another opportunity to dive a little bit deeper. I know we post really fun things on social media. We've got some cool blogs out there, um, but it's different to have an opportunity to really show you all what we're doing and and give up, you know, some fun details that I think um, can be helpful to those that are our long term supporters. And I see so many awesome familiar faces here. So welcome. And I'll dive in because I know it is the middle of the day and everyone has things to do. Um, so I wanted to start with our DC programming. As many of you who have been involved for years, I see Akila, Nora on here. Um, yeah, our programming in DC is finally, I think, at this point where we are incredibly sustainable. Um, so as many of you know, we have programming for middle school students. We work with sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. In sixth grade, we're focused on nutrition and physical activity, seventh grade sexual health and eighth grade mental health. And every student is receiving 10 weeks of this programming per year. So sixth graders are following us through sixth, seventh, eighth grade. Um, and at this point, our curricula is awesome. Our training of athletes is going really well. We have a robust um, number of athletes. You see here 179 in programs this fall. Um, and we have programming for over 600 students. And one of the reasons I'm showing you this snapshot now um, is a testament to helping our folks understand one of our biggest goals right now, which is absolutely growth. You're going to hear more about Philadelphia. But in order to have growth, we know that we need to have systems in place that allow us to have sustainable, high quality programming as we grow, right? We don't wanna just go to Philadelphia and then leave our DC programs hanging. Um, so this snapshot shows our commitment to not only high quality programming in DC, but also continuing to increase the number of students we're reaching. Um, so you can see here that 600 students in a fall semester translates to roughly 35 programs. Um, so for a small staff of only four program team members who are on the call here, shout out to you all, um, that's a lot of programs in nine different schools to manage. Uh, we've also worked with 20 parents um, and we have two Grassroots Connect health fair type style events coming up in a few weeks. So we have a lot going on here in DC um, and a lot I think to be proud of. You can see here our student athlete numbers 600, almost 670 hours thus far volunteered. That number will probably get up closer to 800 by the end of the semester. And a pretty even um, breakdown among university. So one of the reasons I, we have volunteer hours by university and volunteers by university is because we wanna be able to get back to our schools and make sure they understand the impact that their student athletes are having in the community as they volunteer in our programs. So this is super high level and definitely geared towards people that already know what we do. Um, but I'm hoping that showcasing uh, this data helps, uh, you know, our quote unquote insiders, as Katie said, better understand the scope of programming that we have here in DC. Does anyone from our program team wanna hop in there? Nope, you guys are all cool with what I said. Awesome. So we can move over to our Philly update. Um, so while we are actively um, programming in DC, we're also working on our expansion to Philadelphia. So right now we have Temple and Drexel as confirmed athletic departments. I'm actually headed up to Philly tomorrow morning, bright and early to meet with Drexel again. Um, and we're still waiting to hear from um, LaSalle and UPenn on final responses. But honestly, with the amount of excitement we've had thus far from Temple and Drexel, we know we have enough teams excited um, 
about getting trained in January and joining grassroots to start our first pilot programs that will begin in January and February of 2023. So our goal is to have five pilot programs um, with a specific emphasis on sixth and seventh grade students in year one. We recognize our mental health curriculum is really best for students that already have exposure to grassroots and already have pre-established relationships with us. So we don't want to jump into Philly and start talking about mental health with students that don't know who we are. Um, so we're going to focus on sixth and seventh grade students in about five schools. So we're aiming to have 10 to 12 programs in Philadelphia in this first semester. But um, on top of that, we want to make sure that our programs are Philly specific. So we're not going to just be putting what works in DC into Philadelphia schools, um, but we're also gonna be running focus groups while we're piloting these programs to better understand students and teachers' perspectives, as well as parents and administrators' desires and needs in our programming, so that over the next four or five months, we can shape our programs to be something that the Philadelphia community is really proud of. Um, that's how we've created our programs here in DC, and we wanna make sure that we're mirroring that while still trying to grow quickly so that we can reach as many students as possible. Um, and I'm going to flip it over now or turn it over to Trinaya, um, who is our Philly extraordinaire. She's going to be moving to Philly, back to Philly in January to head up our um, Philly program team and has been doing a ton of work to get our middle schools on board while I'm working more with the athletic departments right now. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jada, for the alley -oop. Um, I will say, you know, being able to, uh, be on the other side, um, and work with the middle schools while Jane is, um, working with the athletic departments, you know, has been a great like team for us to kind of come together like a sandwich. Um, but for me, I really want to highlight that, you know, going into this position, um, I mentioned before is like a sweet tart rather than bittersweet. Um, I will say sweet tart because, you know, uh, I, you know, grew up in Philly. Um, I had the chance to, you know, leave and go out and explore the world, right? But um, I've always wanted to go back and envision myself bringing something back to the city that, you know, is useful um, and accessing a lot of, you know, young folks like myself at that time. So um, to go back with grassroots and knowing that I've done this for the past year and a half and, you know, I've been enjoying, have been enjoying, um, you know, my experience, I feel good to go back to my city um, with a program that I, I truly believe in. Uh, it's tart because, you know, like I formed so many bonds here with people. Um, but at the same time, you know, like those bonds that I'm forming here, you know, we hope to kind of like have those branch out to Philly to help us with our expansion as well. Um, <clears throat> and I think what is most fulfilling is uh, the degrees of separation that I've had with um, at least the schools that we've been reaching out to, whether it's a teacher who somehow went to a school that I went to when I was a child, or, you know, my cousin going to the school in the neighborhood and me reaching out to that because of that relationship. So um, it's been great to see those different partnerships um, and try to, you know, work on those partnerships. So for me, this is great. Um, and yeah, I'm excited for us uh, and, you know, the growth that I can gain from this as well. Um, so Thank you all and definitely look forward to the support. And if anybody want to come to Philly, you know, just hit me up. We'll have <laughs> grand old time. <laughs> thank you so much, Trigger Trey. And, you know, thank you so much for all the work that you've done here in D.C. to build relationships. Um, and, you know, I really I'm really excited to see what you and everyone else go, who are going to be working in Philly, what you're going to be able to do. Um, and I think about, you know, what what is it what's our responsibility as an organization to set everyone else up for success um and in thinking about that you know we've got an amazing team we've got jane we've got trinaya um and we've got some pretty lofty but i think reachable goals we've got you know this goal to impact 200 new students 25 parents um all working with 50 new athletes in philly and like Jane said, we're really going to try to focus on sixth and seventh grade in five new schools. Um, but in order to be able to do that well, we've really looked at it structurally and what's going to make the most sense. And we've determined that we are going to need some money to hire the full team. So we're going to need another program coordinator. Um, the one thing that we're thinking about, you know, this time of year, um, this is the end of the year. And so typically for nonprofits, this is one of the best times to raise funds. Um, and we're hoping that we can really take advantage of that 
Um, so that way our staff can focus on other priorities like building relationships with the schools that they're gonna be working in and the universities. So if we can do that um, and make it a joint effort, I think that we're gonna be the most successful. So if you go to the next slide, Mackenzie, I'm gonna show you guys um, a couple things that we're thinking of that would actually make the most impact. Um, and that the biggest thing coming up is Giving Tuesday. It's gonna be November 29th where um, our theme is give to grow. So essentially all the money that we're able to raise this Giving Tuesday, it's gonna go to helping us grow into new schools. Um, and like I said, that's gonna be five new ones by the end of spring 2023. Um, we hope that we can raise $15,000 and have 260 participants. Um, last year, we had a goal of 12,500 and we reached that and we had 188 participants. So just based on our SMART goals, we think that this is a realistic um, you know, goal that we can set for ourselves, um, but it's not gonna be able to be done with our staff alone. We're definitely gonna need some outside supporters. Um, and so I do wanna shout out for just a minute, Jean Ellenport and Craig Lejeune who have already donated to our Giving Tuesday campaign. Um, and they're actually going to be sponsoring a power hour from 10, 10 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock on November 29th. So what that means is anybody who donates during that hour, um, funding will be matched. And so we're really excited about that. We're hoping that more people will donate because of that. Um, you know, thinking about if I give $5, it's like I'm really giving $10. Um, and so we're hoping that we can set a goal for everyone on this call that you'll do either one of three things or all three things. And the first one obviously is donating. Um, not only does this help us bring in funds, but it really sends a message that we're united in this, in this cause, that we're really trying to um, work together on this. And so if it's $5, you know, the cost of a latte, or if it's 500, um, all of it's going to make an impact. Because again, it's not just about the money we bring in, but it's also we want to track how many people are participating. Um, the second thing, you know, the thing about Giving Tuesday is it is predominantly a social media campaign. And so, you know, it's really powerful. Lots of people are on social media now. Um, and so it takes about 10 seconds to get on social media find a post of ours and reshare it. Um, we would really love it if all of you could do that for us. Um, I know a lot of people in the past too have told their story about grassroots. So if it's an alumni, they get on and they share pictures of when they were in programs. Um, they tell a story of a really meaningful interaction that they had with some students. Um, this is just another way to share an insider um, look into what our programs are doing not just for students, but also for athletes, um, for the larger community. And so if you could do that post for us, that would re be really, really incredible. Um, the third thing that we're thinking of is really just trying to share um, who Grassroots Health is with your network. So these might be people who you might not necessarily, um, who might not necessarily know the organization yet. Um, this could be somebody like uh, your significant other, your coworker, your neighbor, um, somebody who might not be an alumni or be on staff, um, but somebody who has never heard of them before. Um, if they could also share, that would be incredible. And, you know, at the very least, it's, it's pushing you to have a conversation with people. And we think that's so, so important. Um, so I'm gonna just ask for a quick poll here. If you feel like you could do one of these things, would you get into your reactions, your emojis and give a thumbs up? If you could do one of these things. Awesome. Jake, Craig, awesome. Yeah, okay, cool. If you think that you could do all three of these things, could you get into your reactions and give a heart? Awesome, y'all. Absolutely, okay. This is so awesome. Again, like this is just one of those things that the more people we have engaged in working on this together, I think the more powerful it's gonna be, the more successful we're gonna be. Um, okay, and with that, a couple more things about Giving Tuesday. So, you know, we know that most people who give to grassroots is because they love the organization, they love the work that we do, um, but it also doesn't hurt to get a little, um, a little happy in return. And so, 
we're agreeing that anybody who can help us raise $500, whether you donate that yourself or whether you, you know, find others to, to donate on your behalf, um, if you can raise $500, we're going to give you a full set of our gear. So we just got some brand new dry fit long sleeve t-shirts in. We also have new hoodies. Um, so just a little incentive for you um, if you can help us get uh, more people to donate. The other thing you should know is when we get finished with this call, I'm going to be sending out an email with a Give to Grow toolkit. So what that will include are just um, some more information about what you can post, how you can post it to be most effective, um, how to write a really compelling case for support. Um, the other thing that we didn't really talk a whole lot about right now, um, but we can talk you know, in follow-up conversations, is this idea of trying to find matching funds through your employer. Depending on who you work for, a lot of companies will match donations that are made on Giving Tuesday. And all it is is an email to your employer to ask you know, the, the process for that. Um, but that's something that you can look for in that toolkit. Also, you know, if this is something that you want to talk more about with me, I'm happy to do that. I would love to talk to you about it. Um, we can schedule a one-on-one. -on -one. You can email me. I'd love to, to keep this conversation going. <laughs> you, you're full swing. Absolutely. Um, last thing, we really wanted to make sure that our Giving Tuesday campaign was not just happening online, but actually on campuses with with. Um, college athletes who are doing the work every day. And so a lot of them have agreed to run an in-person campaign where they're going to be asking their fellow athletes, their athletic departments, um, their fellow students to give to grassroots. Um, they're actually going to be doing this through a competition. So all of our four universities, Georgetown, GW, American, and Howard, they're all going to be racing against each other to raise $500. So if you know, you're an alum and you have a particular alma mater um, that you wanna support, you can do that um, right on our website. There's an opportunity for you to tell us where you want the, those funds to go um, according to which uh, group of athletes you wanna support. But that's pretty much all for that. Um, yeah, and again, if you have any other questions, now is a great time to ask them. We've got plenty of time left over. Um, or feel free to email me. Does anybody have any questions right now? I know we've talked a lot. Yeah, Val, definitely those shirts are cool, aren't they? I have a question. I'm sure the, the money raised goes to a lot of different things, but what's like the top priority that you're hoping to use like the money raised for? That's a great question. Um, if you go back um, a couple of slides, Mac, um, you can see, so oh, that one, yep. So right now we're really thinking about our expansion. Um, all of the funds will definitely be going to growing um, our, our programs. And so again, our goal is to do, um, to serve 200 students, um, work with 25 parents through our grassroots fam um, in Philly and then also work with 50 new athletes. So, and thinking about what's realistic of what we could raise in a Giving Tuesday campaign, um, we're, we're shooting for $15,000. That can go towards raising, or I'm sorry, to hiring a new program coordinator primarily. And so then that way we have um, several people working on this. Um, it also frees up you know, our current staff to, to shore up our programming here in DC. So I, I hope that answers your question, but. I, yeah, I can add on to that a little bit, Katie. Yeah. Nora, I think that's a really good question. Um, and I know I've had a lot of conversations with various alumni and supporters about this. Um, but like, you know, people have said, what's what's the hardest thing about expansion? And I think for us, it's recognizing we want our programs to be really high quality in Philly and we want them to be really community centric. We've also spent 10 years building that in DC with a commitment to knowing our schools as you know, right? As someone that knew our teachers and worked in the same schools year after year. Um, and so to be able to get on the ground right away and get the ball rolling quickly, we recognize that we're gonna need more staff. But we also don't wanna commit to that staff until we've gotten all of this buy-in from Philly. So there's a little bit of this like, you know, you, you get the funding once we prove that we've done something really great, but we also know from our experience in DC that we need staff to make that happen. Um, so I think a big part of our individual 
donor campaign this year is to help us launch this kind of like being an angel donor, right? Like the support we get now will allow us to raise more money in Philly and be able to give Trinaya five team members to go be really successful. Um, and so we're kind of, it's that like early stages of we're all just recognizing we can do this without a ton of extra staff, but it's unrealistic to think that our DC staff is going to just support Philly forever, knowing how much work we have um, to do on the ground here to really keep up our sustainability. Not that Trinaya can't do it all on her own because <laughs> Girl definitely can. Wonder Woman. Please. And I think this is just to reiterate that as well um, and add some nuance. I think what we've gotten in Philly from a lot of funders that are in Philly, many of you know, we're, we're largely grant funded. Um, they, we've had a lot of funders say, this is such a cool idea, but Philly is a really difficult place to work. It's hard to get into schools. I know some people on this call have you know worked in Philly schools. Um, and so the, these funders are saying, we're waiting, we're waiting, as Jane said, and we want to see sort of like after you guys have gotten into the schools, what the programs look like. And we know that every single person on this call doesn't need to be told what grassroots is. Like you all have already already supported us. Some of you have volunteered in our schools. And so we know that you know our, our capabilities and, um, and we know that like when you, when you not just donate, but when you post and share your networks as well, um, have been supportive in the past too. So um, that's that's a big focus of having a really solid start in Philly for us. Any other hard hitting questions? Akila, I feel like you always have good questions. I bet Nora has like five more that she won't ask. And we are all ears as well as we continue to try to develop like ways to engage you all outside of just asking for money on Giving Tuesday and for your support. Um, we really, we really know that the only way we're going to eventually become a national organization is to tap into the networks of all the people who have already um, supported us in so many ways. So any feedback, even small feedback on this session or feedback on how our Giving Tuesday campaign goes or things that you think went well or didn't go well. Um, we love to hear it. And we got a lot of feedback from those who were able to go to the gala. It was such a special night for all of us. Um, but we're really, we're really trying to focus on thinking about how, you know, here we are on Zoom, um, how we can continue to do great Zoom calls, but also see you all in these places as we start to move, um, move around the country. Hey Tyler, this is Val Delp in Philly. I just wanted to chime in quick if that's okay. Of course. I just wanted to say thank you for organizing this today because I know you guys are super, super busy doing your day jobs, but making the time to reach out to all of us and give us an inside look at what's going on is really awesome. I know I don't have any questions at the moment, but I'm making a to-do list for myself of my network in Philly, schools, potential donors, what I can do to help. So we're just so grateful to you all for what you're doing and um, thank you. Thank you. Thank and you, shout Val. out to Val, who has made it possible for us to be registered in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. among many other things. But I'm not sure we would have ever done it properly without the legal help from Val and her team to make sure we're set up for success in Philly. Happy to help. So, so important. And also just a little plug, if you didn't catch it in our newsletter that went out last week, there is a nice little blog post about Val that you should definitely read if you have not yet. Um, kind of gives a little bit more of the inside scoop of Val and just you know, everything that Hogan Levels has done for grassroots. So we appreciate you, Val. Thank um, you. Does anybody else have any other final questions before we wrap up? Okay. Oh, love it. All right, y'all. Well, thanks again. Um, Again, feel free to set up a one-on-one -on -one with any one of us. We'd be happy to continue the conversation. Um, other than that, just be on the lookout for our Giving Tuesday campaign information coming to you really soon through your email and 